Good morning. It is Monday, January 25th, right? Here we are, uh, our third week of our 21 days of prayer. Uh, really, it's such a highlight of getting up each day and uh, leaning into this space, praying together, uh, looking at God's Word. Just a, a great way to start our our week. So uh, today, January 25th, uh, you can find your Bible. Uh, hey, Zanny, Nanette, um, uh, Second Chronicles 7.14, many of you are familiar with that verse, and um, uh, we'll be praying through Second Chronicles 7.14. Uh, Morning, Dana. Uh, praying for you, Dana, uh, knowing that God is going to just uh, show up in a miraculous way. Hey, Debbie and Ashley, Evelyn, Andrea, Hans, good morning, everybody. And uh, Second Chronicles 7.14, we are in... Uh, Hey, Bob. Hey, Greg. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, we're in uh, January 25th. Wow, how has this gone so fast, right? Uh, incredible. Uh, then also, we are reading through uh, the ch one chapter of the Bible, Greg. We're reading through uh, Romans chapter 12. We're resetting our minds each morning. Uh, hey, Terry. Uh, every morning, Aaron um, and... Um, we're just just letting it seep down into who we are, Kimberly, and this is a this is a difference maker in our in our lives, right? So we'll read uh, verse fifteen uh, from Romans chapter twelve this morning, and then uh, we will read Second uh, Chronicles uh, seven seven fourteen together, right? Hope everybody had uh, a good week. Uh, hey, Chris, uh, good to see you this morning. Uh, Man, uh, you are, uh, make me smile. Remember that time you impersonated me? Uh, it was really good. Uh, hey, Michael Santini. How you been, Michael Santini? What a name, right? Michael Santini. Um, good to see just everybody. Cheryl, everybody joining up on um, uh, this call. Uh, met uh, yesterday on campus, um, Cindy. Uh, Cindy has been uh, joining us and uh, she came on, on Sunday and Really enjoyed uh, talking to you yesterday, uh, Deneen and, and Marianne and Teresa, uh, so many of us gathering up uh, uh, in this space. Hope you had a good weekend, uh, ready to finish off the month of January really, really strong. Hey, Peggy um, and Terry and Tammy. All right, so let's let's lean into God's word, okay, and um, and then we'll we'll have some prayer time uh, together. So in Romans chapter 12, right, you've been reading through that uh, each and every every day. Today, we are reading from just verse 15, where God says uh, to, to us, rejoice with those who rejoice, mourn with those who mourn. Rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. Hey, Janice and Jim and Caitlin and Betty, um, it is Monday. You are right. Um, now, that's an interesting verse, and it, 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 it might almost seem like it's too simplistic, right? Rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. The reason that's important is our tendency, and for many years, um, I really saw this in the wrong way. Our tendency is to lean into someone else's life how we feel how I think, right? And um, rather than starting with them. Uh, in, in other words, value the other person first. If they're rejoicing, rejoice with them, regardless if you feel like rejoicing or not. You're leaning into their space. That's what, that's what he's teaching us, is that, hey, Barb, our role is not to try to change somebody's emotions, my role isn't trying to convince them why maybe right now is not the right time to be rejoicing. Can't you see all the things that are happening in the world? Why or or remember it says rejoice with those who rejoice or mourn with those who mourn. Or you know, okay, you shouldn't be mourning. I know it looks like it's bad right now, but it's going to get better. And you know, da, da, da. what God's teaching us is to follow His example. Jesus always entered into the space of others where they were. Now that's huge. That's huge because our humanity is to always think with ourselves in mind. That's why we're taught not to think on our own things, but on the things of others. 
And so this week, as we start off this Monday, think about all your relationships at work, at home, uh, in your neighborhood, uh, on, your, on your high school campus, college campus, uh, with your in-laws, uh, whatever. Think about entering their space. Number one, valuing them. Val- value who they are. Just start there. That, that will take all of our relationships to a higher level this week. Bethany, if we just, Carmen, uh, Evan, if we just step into people's lives this week and value them for who they are, and you can do that because number one, God created them. I didn't ask you to accept their behavior. I, I, I said, value them for who they are. Mourn with those who mourn and rejoice with those who rejoice, Craig. Walk into their space, value them for who they are. Then connect with them where they are. Did you catch that? You start by just valuing people. We are a divided people. There are a lot of broken relationships right now. The key is this, how do you build a bridge? We've got way too many people building barriers. We need to build bridges. And it starts when you value somebody just just for who they are. Second, you connect with them where they are. That's why he said, mourn with those who mourn and rejoice with those who rejoice. Connect with them. Don't try to change them. Hey, parents, value your teenager for who they are and connect with them where they are. Many of us have forgotten, right, what it was like to be a teenager. Or if you're an employer and you're the boss, you forgot what it's like to be managed by somebody else, to have a supervisor. So we connect with people where they are, right? Mourn with people who mourn, rejoice with people who rejoice. How do you do that? You value people, just value them for who they are. Then you connect with them where they are. Are they in a season of mourning? Are they in a season of rejoicing? Are they in a season of doubt and discouragement? Are they in a season where they're filled with lots of hope, right? Now watch this. Then, right, you value them where they are, you connect with them. And you're right, Gene, the best way to connect with somebody is to listen to them. If you'll listen to them, they'll share, and then you can ask a follow-up question. So value them where they are, connect with them, or value them with who they are, connect with them where they are, and then watch this. Add value to their lives. When, when, when you add value to them, you lean into that space. You be the person that helps them see how valuable they are, that they're worth connecting to. So that's just a little nugget for our relationships this week. Take it with you. We'll pray through that in a moment uh, from Romans chapter 12. But I'm, I'm just telling you, you know this to be true. Most of our stress and most of our problems in life are through relationships. And many of us, right, we're like, oh man, I wish I could have gone back and I wouldn't have said it the way that I said it. Ah, I can't believe that I sent that text. Oh, did I really send that email? Hey, listen, here's some really good news. It's Monday <laughs> and we can go through this whole week with this filter of valuing people for who they are, connecting with people where they are and adding value to them along the way. Okay. Hey, now, Second Chronicles seven fourteen today, uh, January twenty fifth. We are praying for a spirit of repentance and unity to flow through our nation, and pray to be the change you're hoping to see in the world. And this is really important. Uh, this is not a, a, a political verse. One political party doesn't own this verse. Uh, Vicky, Teresa, more than somebody else. Um, this is a verse that God wrote specifically to the nation of Israel. Now, America is not Israel. We didn't replace Israel. Um, God's covenant with Israel continues to this day. But the principles we can extract, because the United States is the only country uh, that, that built its foundation on the creator God. The yeah, United Kingdom didn't. France didn't. Bolivia didn't. China didn't, Japan didn't, Australia didn't. The United States, our founders built our entire political, social, cultural system on 
the creator God. All throughout our founding documents, you find scriptures. You go to Washington, D.C., and you see on all the, the buildings uh, about God. You see images of, of Moses on our, on our money. So this verse is appropriate for us today. And what I think is really important is for us to understand the timing in which this, this comes to us today. When God was dealing with Israel, ancient Israel, the year was 604, 604 BC, and Israel had turned their back towards God. And God allowed the Babylonians to attack Jerusalem but they only breached the walls. They didn't take over the entire city. And they pushed back Babylon. God used that, Ken, Anna. God used that, Vicky, as a wake-up call. He wanted Israel to realize that they needed to repent, that they needed to turn, right? Here, listen for yourself, Second Chronicles 7, 7, 14. If my people, so in other words, it's conditional. It's a question. If my people who are called by name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, um, then I will hear from them and, and forgive their sin and heal their land. And so here's the deal, is in 604, uh, 604, 604 BC, uh, check my history, 605 BC, um, that first attack comes, attack comes against um, Jerusalem. And they don't see it as a wake-up call. Quite frankly, quite, quite frankly they, they stiffened their necks. They went even further from God. Instead of repenting like we're going to do here in 2 Chronicles 7.14, they, they went farther from God. They became even more sinful, more wicked. And then in 586, remember it's BC, so the numbers are going down, right? Five, 586, 19 years later, God allowed for the Babylonians to come in, not just breach the walls this time, Tom, but to destroy Jerusalem, took people into captivity, and Jerusalem was no more. Now, why do I share that with you on a Monday morning when you barely got a cup of coffee? Is because the timing. It was 19 years. I believe with my entire heart that 9-11, America misunderstood what God was saying. We took it as a time of revenge against another nation rather than having our eyes and our hearts opened up that we had turned from God and God was calling us to repent. Just like Babylon, they breached the, the walls. Our country was, was breached, right? Breached. I've done some messages on this. You can go online and, and watch them. But 20 years later, think about the chaos in 2020. Think about the chaos in the first three weeks of 2021. America has gone further from God since 2001. We have decided that we would stiff our necks. Instead of hearing from God and turning from our wicked ways and repenting, America's actions have actually become more sinful in those 19 years, just like Israel. Now hear me. I'm not saying that we are Israel. I'm not saying that emphatically that this 19-year timeline is exact. But what I am saying, it gives us a sense of urgency for our prayer today that we do need to pray for our country. We do need to pray for our communities. We do need to pray for one another. And wherever, wherever, wherever you or me is walking away from God and we need to repent, what I love about that word repent is God's not mad at you. God's madly in love with you, Marsha. And he's not trying to beat us up. He's wanting us to understand we're headed in the wrong direction. That's what repentance is. Repentance is saying, oh my goodness, I'm headed in the wrong direction and God's inviting me to turn and come back to him where I find forgiveness and grace and mercy and help in my time of need. Why wouldn't we want to repent? Well, I just, I don't understand. God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So on this Monday, on this Monday, let's pray, whatever. I'll pray generally for our country, but let's make sure we make it personal 
that you and I, we repent. Because the best way, matter of fact, the only way that our country, the only way that our communities, the only way that our family, the only way that your marriage, the only way that your health, the only way that your, your, your children or whatever the thing in the world that you want to see changed, two things. One, put Jesus in play because Jesus is the change. Jesus is the change. Put Jesus in, 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 in play and then you've got to decide to change. We've got to change. That's what repentance is. And that's what we're going to pray about. That's right, Jonathan. 1 John 1, 9 is what I quoted. Okay? Is everybody ready to pray? Monday morning. We're going, we're going to crush this week because we're starting this week in worshiping our God. We're starting in this week and having a conversation with God in his word and in prayer. And I'm telling you, when you and I lift our hands to worship, when you teach your children to worship, to declare the great worth of God, you teach your children to have, and your grandchildren, to have a conversation with God every day, then no matter what happens this week, they will be okay. When you declare the worth of God, and when you have a conversation with God, no matter what might happen this week, you, me, we will be okay. God, I lift my hands and I declare that you and you alone are God. You created this universe. Every single person that's lived, is living, and will live is created by you. We declare with our lips your greatness and your holiness. We declare that you are the ever-present God. You are the all-knowing God. You are the all-sufficient God. There is nothing that you're lacking. We declare that you are the, the, the perfect, true God. It's impossible for you to lie. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Our hands are wide open because we are free. That allows us, God, to mourn with people who are mourning. It allows us to rejoice with people who are rejoicing. We don't have to have a close fist and try to control people. We can have our hands open to love people. We put our hands forward, God. Let us see people as you see them. Help us to value people. Help us, God, this week to connect with people where they are. Give us the, the patience to ask questions, to discover what's really going on in their lives. Help us, God, when people are asking us questions that we would be willing to be transparent, to let people into our lives, to believe that there's people who value us. There's people who are willing to connect with us. There's people who want to add value to our lives. God, let this be reciprocal. Show us how we need each other as we mourn with each other and as we rejoice with each other. And then, God, we lean in to 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. If my people, we, we, got our, we are your adopted sons and daughters. Because of Jesus, we are your people. Because of Jesus and our sins being forgiven and we being added to your family. God, with this morning, we wanna move it from an if to it is we will. We who are your people, who are called by your name, we will humble ourselves. Forgive us, God, with our appetite to be first, for our thirst to be best. The way we often minimize and marginalize people around us as we see them as competition to crush them and to control them. We humble ourselves and say that we're wrong and you are right. We're talking to you this morning. We're praying and seeking your face. God, we are turning from our wicked ways. God, forgive our country. The, the children that we have murdered over the decades. God, we are murderers and blood is on our hands and we ask for forgiveness. I ask that you'd move upon our politicians and they wouldn't see babies in a mother's womb as just tissue, but their eyes would be opened. God, forgive us for the way that we have treated each other because of the color of our skin. We have been racial. We, we have minimized and marginalized people because of the color of their skin. We have oppressed them and justice hasn't been for all. God, use me, use each person, use our lives, God, as a way to value people, to connect with people where they are. God, whatever 
advantages that we might have. Help us to use those advantages to help others, to lift others up around us. God, the way that we've minimized and marginalized um, people of the opposite sex, the way we've said they can only do this or can do that, the, the glass ceiling that we've put on, on people. Forgive us, we repent. The way, God, that we haven't spent time with you in your word and had conversations with you and we have, we have, we've acted politically as though a politician in Washington, D.C. would be our source and be our strength. We repent from this and we declare that you and you alone are the true living God. Forgive us, God, when we've seen athletics and academics more important than spiritual development in our children. God, we repent. We repent, God, for the way that we have spoken to people on social media, what we've texted and tweeted and emailed and all the different things. God, forgive us for the way we've been impatient. We haven't trusted you and, and waited patiently. Remind us, God, that your delays are not denials. God, we're asking that you would hear us from heaven, that you would forgive us and you would heal our land. That God, we know people are hurting, hurting because of this virus, hurting because of the racial tensions, hurting because of the political divisions. And God, when people are hurting, transformation can happen. Help us, God, this week to be bold, to share with people around us our story of how life was before we met you. God, would you use Romans chapter six and verse 23 for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, your gift is eternal life through your son, Jesus Christ. Use Romans 6.23 this week, God. Give us courage to share that. And most, God, let people see how we so enjoy life as Christ followers. Forgive us for the way we blame and complain and defend, the way that we throw away our marriages, the way that we uh, don't really live lives much different than anybody else. Let people see the incredible joy and hope that's in us. God, revive us, renew us, restore us as your people. Let this be a supernatural week, not an ordinary week in January, but a week because we gathered together on this Monday. It propelled us further in our courage for you and deeper in our faith in you. God, your hand of favor on all today. All the different prayer requests that we've been bringing to you, you meet each and every one of them according to your perfect will in heaven. I sure do love you. I've never been on January 25th, 2021 before. Neither has anybody on this call. So God, guide us and give us your wisdom for your glory and for each person's joy. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Hey, everybody. Have a great rest of this day. Uh, wow. Y'all just inspire me. I'm ready to go. If you think about it, today at 1230, I'm hosting a symposium. I'm going to be asked all kinds of questions um, from university students about some of the pressure points that we find in our culture today. It's not a, a spiritual a meeting. It's a secular meeting. I wanted to exactly what I talked to you guys talk about. I am valuing university students today before they have careers, before they have, I'm value, and I'm entering into their space. I'm making a decision to connect with them and I'm hoping to add value to them. So pray for me 1230 Eastern time. All right, everybody. Peace. I'll see you tomorrow morning right back here, 7 a.m.